Okay, members, uh, Mr. Doug Beatty has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Justice. I would remind members if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in your places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Justice what action she has taken to prevent breaches of COVID-19 regulations in the Holy Lands area of Belfast. And I call the Minister of Justice. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The scenes we've been witnessing in the Holy Lands area, not just over recent weeks but for a number of years now, have been a cause of real distress and anxiety for residents. It's a problem that predates the coronavirus pandemic but which has been exacerbated by it since it is now putting people's health in danger. I have no hesitation in condemning such irresponsible and inconsiderate behaviour, whether it's by people living in the area or by others coming into the area for entertainment. And I welcome the actions by the PSNI, Belfast City Council and others that they have taken to deal with those caught breaching the public health regulations and making uh, residents' lives a misery. The executive has a collective responsibility to encourage people to comply with the COVID-19 re restrictions, whether these are contained in guidance or given legal effect through regulations. Enforcement of public health restrictions is not the sole responsibility of my department, nor am I as Minister of Justice leading this important piece of work. A working group has been recently set up by the executive to assist in its response to compliance and enforcement, which is a cross-cutting matter. The working group is led by junior ministers in the executive office for this reason. It held its first meeting on Wednesday, the 16th of September. My department is represented at senior official level alongside a number of other departments and statutory agencies. Partnership working between all of the relevant agencies is crucial at both strategic and local level to deliver a swift and coordinated response to problematic behaviour. And I can assure the member that I and my department will play a full part in that. And I call Doug Biddy to ask a supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, I genuinely thank the Minister for coming along because I, I know you've got an awful lot going on at this moment in time. And I totally agree with her that these COVID breaches have their genesis uh, in antisocial behaviour in the Holy Lands, uh, which has been going on for an awful long time. Uh, and although I'm not from Belfast, I have watched the residents be absolutely tortured uh, by what's going on there. Um, and I know that the DO, DOJ did a review of antisocial behaviour in 2018, but we're still waiting for the output of that. Uh, I also note that five, Part 5 of the Criminal Justice NI Order 2008 allows for the police to stop antisocial behaviour due to access to alcohol in an area listed by a council, yet they've never used it. The Minister could legislate for public space petition orders, but we have not. So the question is, what has the Minister done and what measures has she brought before the Executive COVID Enforcement Working Group, which I believe you should be heading and attending? With respect to the member, the, the composition of the working group was not a matter for the Department um, of Justice. It was a matter for the Department of Health and the Executive Office. So I would suggest that perhaps it's something that he should take up with them. In terms of what we have brought forward, we have been facilitating the police to ask for additional powers where those are required. We have asked them specifically if they need additional actions taken. And to date, where they have required additional powers, we have sought to have those implemented. However, they have not been asking for additional powers because many of the regulations in terms of health regulations are, are effective in, in, in controlling what happens within people's homes and that is a very hard area for the police to actually have control over. This is a point that has been made repeatedly by the executive that we rely not on enforcement but on people being willing to comply with those regulations. The complex issues in the Holy Land go way beyond simply the coronavirus regulations. They extend into antisocial and sometimes criminal behaviour. And the police have been acting to deal with those issues, both in terms of criminality, there have been arrests, and also in terms of breaches of the coronavirus regulations. I call Paul Gibbon. The vast majority of people of Northern Ireland will follow these regulations and indeed don't need the law to get them to act with common sense. Uh, but where regulations are being used as the tool to best combat COVID-19, um, if they're going to be Im implemented, for them to have any credibility, they then need to be enforced. And where you have blatant breaches of the COVID regulations, like the Bobby Story funeral, like what we have seen in the Holy Lands, it's vital that the police then act uh, and enforce those regulations. What uh, confidence has the Minister got that the PSNI are 
uh, effectively policing these regulations where we have blatant breaches occurring? Well, as the member knows, being chair of the committee, it is not my responsibility to answer for on behalf of the Chief Constable when it comes to operational matters. This is a matter that the member would be best to take up with the Chief Constable directly or via one of his colleagues on the policing board because that is the right forum on which to hold the police to account. I am accountable for the actions that are taken by the Department of Justice, not by the Police Service of Northern Ireland. However, I would direct the member towards the figures that are in the public domain with respect to the work that has been been done um, in terms of enforcement. Um, 116 COVID-1 notices, that's £60 fines, have been handed out over the weekend. Um, approximately 203 COVID notices have been handed out since the 1st of September. The PSNI have confirmed that most of those notices have been given out following attendance at houses where there has been disturbance. But however, there is an issue that given that 15 people can meet up, uh, up to 15 people can meet outside, it can be very difficult in larger, in larger uh, crowds of people to distinguish one group of 15 from another. And that is something that the executive needs to return to in due course. The difficulty, of course, with all of this is trying to balance um, the public uh, health issues with civil liberties issues. Because, as you rightly say, most people abide by this because they believe it is the right thing to do. And it would be, I think, an unfortunate consequence if we were to penalise those who, who obey the restrictions and obey the law, um, if we were to penalise them all simply because a few um, concerted individuals make an effort not to do so. Call Jerry Kelly. I go on British lesson, I thank the Minister for her answer up to now and uh, let me agree with her in terms of it being a cross departmental and, and cross uh, agency uh, issue that all be involved. So I wanted to, since you've answered that part of the question, um, ask you do you have any update in terms of any uh, conversations with the landlords in the area and uh, what that has amounted to, and also, of course, the residents uh, who are suffering in the area. Are they being kept up to date with uh, by the, the uh, multi agencies, in particular uh, the, the department, in terms of what's going on? I thank the member for the issue that he's raised. He will be aware um, of the working group on the Holy Lands that Belfast City Council chairs in terms of trying to address these issues, and it encompasses many of the agencies that he has mentioned. Since Friday, um, there has been a subgroup, a very focused subgroup, in terms of the COVID regulations and how this can be addressed in the current circumstances. Um, and so council officers are working together along with the, uh, their nighttime noise officers, their safer neighbourhoods officers, and their AS SB officers um, to work on reporting to the police. So, for example, noise offences can be followed up after the event, um, but COVID breaches will take precedence when it comes to those issues. Um, it also is clear that the universities have a responsibility and a role in this. And as I have said publicly today, I believe that also landlords have. If you have tenants who are causing persistent um, and ongoing nuisance, not only um, to other full-time residents of the area, but to other students who are there to study, um, not to be on a wrecking mission in that community. It is completely unfair that that is allowed to continue. They are stakeholders in that community. They gain rent from those properties and they should be robust in dealing with their tenants where their tenants are creating nuisance or engaging in criminal activity. And I would hope that landlords would engage positively and constructively with other agencies in the same way that the council um, and other local residents groups have done so to date. Call Matthew O'Toole. Uh, Mr. Speaker, welcome to the Minister coming today uh, and welcome this question being asked. Uh, no one wants to demonise students, but it's clear that in the Holy Land a group of students have behaved terribly in relation to uh, these restrictions. Can I ask that the group that has been set up, as well as looking at the urgent issues around COVID enforcement, looks at many of the longer term questions that have plagued inner South Belfast and the Holy Land neighbourhood, including the appalling behaviour of some of the HMO owners um, and some of the deeper cultural issues around uh, student behaviour in that area. Can I ask her, I know it's not just in her department's bailiwick, but can she, can she and the executive look more broadly at find, turning that into a high-level, long-term group to look at issues around the Holy Land? Well, to be clear, the groups that have been set up under the auspices of the executive are there specifically to look at the coronavirus regulations and the enforcement of those, which is an important but one small part um, of the overall picture on this. 
It is important to recognise that we shouldn't assume that one group are responsible for all of the problems. It's not all students. In fact, what the police have indicated to us is that many of the people who have received notices are not students at either of our universities, but are drawn to the area because there are students there and then go on the rampage while they're there. They're often visitors rather um, than residents. So it is a complex area and I agree that it needs to be taken forward. However, I would argue very strongly um, and as someone who previously sat in Belfast City Council that it is by far the best place for this to be taken forward because it has many of the ongoing levers in terms of planning, in terms of enforcement of noise and statutory nuisance, in terms of dealing with waste which has also been a major problem in the area and all of those other behaviours and I think it is the right vehicle to take forward that longer term approach which is absolutely necessary and I would absolutely agree with the member on that. I call Paula Bradshaw. Mr Speaker, Minister, can you provide us what your department's roles and responsibilities, if any, are on this new enforcement group? Yes, um, there are a number of new enforcement groups um, that have been set up. I mean, first and foremost, there is a, a group which has been set up um, in terms of the executive um, at a strategic level, um, and that ministerial-led group um, is, is already um, working forward in terms of looking at collaboration and operational challenges. The focus in that case has been discussing the best mechanism for the provision of public health information to inform enforcement activity. It involves the PSNI, local council, PHA and the relevant departments, including my own. Um, indeed, they have also been working on a number of other subgroups, which looked at re reviewing relaxations, restrictions um, on travel and the hospitality sector, um, as well as the weekly Four Nations stock take and we all obviously have an enforcement focus on those. The executive also agreed a new ministerial subgroup would be established chaired by TEO junior ministers on compliance and enforcement and it met for the first time on Wednesday the 16th. The discussion there centred on the current challenges in the Holy Lands. We have a DOJ representative at senior level on that group um, and it also includes the Minister for Health, um, a member from the PSNI, representatives of SOLAS, the Chief Medical Officer and Chief Scientific Officer, um, and then, as I say, representatives from DFC and TEO um, Information Service as well. And I call Claire Bailey. Speaker, um, and it's good to hear the Minister acknowledge that this is a long-term problem for the area, um, just heightened with the extra added pressures and dangers with COVID. And the Health Minister this morning told this House that over 50 notices had been issued in the past few days in the Holy Land area, and this is good news. And I would certainly uh, pity the fool who would go ahead with a house party in the area these days. But can I ask the Minister if she plans to be on the ground and experience firsthand the true extent of the antisocial and criminal behaviours that need dealt with in the area in the long term? Her question. I'm not sure um, that it's actually wise for more people to be on the streets rather than fewer when we're actually asking people to take these COVID regulations seriously. I'm well aware of the problem. I served on Belfast City Council for over 10 years. Throughout that time, this was a major problem. I have visited the area many times. Our own um, party headquarters is in the centre of that area. And my colleague, who is the MLA for the area, is regularly on the ground to see what people are going through. So I don't think we need to add to more footfall fall in the area, I think that I can rely on those who are, who are there to enforce the regulations to do that and to do so responsibly. I have met with the residents many times on this issue. It is hugely frustrating that young people who have a privilege, and it is a privilege, to be able to go to university, to be able to study, to be able to further their lives, um, are behaving in such an inconsiderate and selfish manner. And I have to say that we all understand what it is to be a student and to have fun. We've all been there, though it may be hard to believe it when you look at some of us now. Um, but we have all been there. Um, the problem here isn't that young people are going to waken up tomorrow morning with a bad hangover. They're going to waken up with a, cri a criminal record um, that actually marks them out for the rest of their lives. They need to get a grip. I call Steve Egan. Thank you very much indeed, Minister, for coming and speaking to you this evening. Uh, Minister, you have outlined a plethora of sort of responses to this issue to do with the Holy Land. So you yourself have shown a considerable amount of knowledge of the issues that have been uh, affecting the Holy Lands for a very long period of time. But what I think we all think this needs is senior leadership and a ministerial direction and somebody with your experience to take personal charge of this. Would you commit to actually getting this moving and taking personal charge of this issue yourself? 
Well, I mean, I am delighted to hear that the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party has such faith in me as an individual to be able to turn around such a, a, a long-standing problem in the Holy Lands. However, I, I, would, I would point out to him that the danger, of course, of the Minister of Justice taking this issue on is that people focus entirely on police enforcement. That is what happens when the Minister of Justice takes responsibility. And this is not a matter simply for the PSNI. The councils have responsibility for matters such as nighttime noise. Belfast City Council have their nighttime noise service. They're safe for neighbourhood officers and a houses and multiple occupancy unit. Queen's University are also dealing through their community engagement, working with a wide range of partners in terms of how they're going to return students, but also looking at what sanctions will be applied to those students who do receive penalty notices. And the university of Ulster is also engaging with students living in problematic properties and has maintained a presence on the ground throughout. So whilst I am flattered um, that you believe that I could turn it around simply by taking leadership of the group, um, I will resist the temptation um, to step into the shoes of my colleagues in the executive office, whose job it is to coordinate those matters which are cross-cutting in the executive. I call Gordon Dunn. Speaker, and I too thank the Minister for coming here this evening. I think we were all shocked at the behaviour that, that was taking place in the Holy Land. But what discussions has the Minister had with the Chief Constable, even considering cordoning off the area for, for a short period of time to restrict access to residents only and to those students who can prove that they are legitimate tenants uh, with some perhaps documentation from their landlords? I have had no conversations with the Chief Constable about that particular matter. I think that to introduce some kind of accord and sanitaire around the Holy Lands would be incredibly difficult given the transient nature of the population, given the multiplicity of businesses that operate in that place by daytime um, and the number of services that operate there in the evening. So I think it would be incredibly difficult to do so. However, I have talked at length with the Chief Constable um, about the enforcement issues in the area, about the antisocial behaviour issues in the area. Um, and it's a conversation that I've had with previous Chief Constables. This is not going to be easily resolved, and none of us, I think, should assume that it will be. But I believe that the coronavirus regulations provide an extra layer of challenge, um, but also an extra opportunity to drive home to young people the risks that they are taking with their health. As I say, this is not just hijinks. We have had people's property damaged, wing mirrors kicked off cars, windows smashed. I mean, this is not minor and trivial. This is a significant impact not just on the residents who live there permanently, but on other students who are there with a view to getting an education, not a criminal record. I call Paul Fruit. But it has blighted the area for many years. And it is the case, and it's true, that you're asking the police to police living rooms and gardens. Is it not the case that messaging must do the job in order that we get compliance? And is that message not shot to pieces when the Minister's own executive colleagues in Sinn Féin willfully and brutally flaunt the regulations and do not apologise for it or take responsibility for it? How does the Minister, even the Justice Minister and a member of the executive, fix that problem and give a concerted message? Well, my recollection is that, um, referring to the incident in question, it has actually been apologised for, but I would certainly ask the member if he could perhaps speak to some of his colleagues who are, for example, displaying a deep and profound resistance to wearing masks um, and to following the other health advice um, that is being offered, because I think that that is unhelpful. It isn't just the executive who have responsibilities in these issues. It's every elected representative. And so, you know, gently I would say to the member he should look at some of his colleagues who have been anything but exemplary in that regard. I call Tom Buchanan. Thank you, um, Minister. Thank you for being here this evening uh, on this issue. But uh, I note where you do place uh, a lot of blame on the landlords. And yet, while the landlords may have some responsibility, surely the bulk of the responsibility lies with the tenant who signed up the tenancy agreement and to all of the uh, issues uh, relating to that particular agreement. And therefore, the responsibility is actually on the tenant more so than the landlord. And it's their responsibility to adhere to what's on the tenancy agreement and also to the COVID regulations. 
I have no problem in saying that it is entirely the responsibility of the tenant to adhere to the COVID regulations and to abide by their tenancy agreements. And when they fail to do so, we then look to enforcement. We have talked about the role the councils can play in enforcement. We have talked about the role that the police can play in enforcement, that the universities can play in enforcement. So we are looking at a multi-agency approach. I see no reason why landlords should not be part of that multi-agency approach, given that huge numbers of students are residing in those properties um, in, in, and are in the area because they have tenancies and many of those who come and stay in the area are staying in those properties um, with, with their friends. So I think that there is a serious issue for landlords to address but you're absolutely right. It is not their fault that this is happening but they must take responsibility for those elements where they can actually have a positive impact. This is a community in which they have invested in terms of buying a home. It is also a community in which they make their business and their money um, in terms of the rents that they receive. They are invested in that community and they should play a role along with everyone else who is a stakeholder in trying to improve the, the situation for all of the residents. Because let's be clear, this is as much for the students themselves as it is for the full-time residents of that neighbourhood. Members, that concludes this item of business. Item 6 on the order paper is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly